hey guys good evening uh, thank you so much for joining the class so yesterday class we completed voice layers and also i provided couple of interview questions these voice layers will be used for communication purpose so that may be user to user communication or user to server communication or peer to peer communication peer is nothing but neighbor device or opposite device that is called peer so next one is a user to database communication or user to application communication mainly for communication purpose we will use these voice layers so this one is defined by iso international standard organization in 1984 so that is about voice layers so as per training topic we'll go and we will see what is the next topic so it's ip addresses ip addresses classification of ip address and types of ip address so that is our next topic so we will go and we will discuss about class of ip address and what is ip address and uh, what are the different types of ip addresses we have and why ip address is so important let's start so ip address before going to ip address ip address let's say we, first of all we will discuss about nic card from there we will go to mac address from there we will go to ip address all these things we already we discussed part of abbreviations and definitions i will repeat once again so nic card so nic full form is network interface card network interface card so every laptop or every device has this network interface card what this network interface card will do it will convert electrical signals into data signals so that computer can understand so if you want to see practically what is nic card so it will use vlsa designing okay combination with chips so this already i have shown you so this is nothing but nic card so this nic card normally we will insert one of the cable that cable will connect to electrical signal into so data signals so finally computer is able to understand in the form of zero and bits that is nothing but raw bits okay so that is nic card so next one is uh, mac address so every network interface interface card every network interface card or every ethernet interface card has one of the physical address that physical address we will call it is a mac address mac full form is media access control media access control example we have seen switch in ys layer as part of data link layer switch will is a media access control right so here it's a part of physical address so every nic card or ethernet interface has physical address in that physical address we will call it as mac address so now coming to someone asked already previously if multiple ethernet interfaces are there in the laptop in that scenario we have multiple mac addresses will be there so example in our laptop you connected wifi you connected lan you connected one of the virtual box you configured one of the vmware machine so these four types has ethernet interface so that means wifi connection has one mac address lan connection has one mac address and virtual box whatever you configured so that has one one mac address finally what are vm where you configure that has one mac address okay so serial number is a completely always unique so it's always that may be mobile or maybe laptop or router or switch or load balancer or printer at the time of so manufacturing of the respective device they will give one of the number that number will call serial number that serial number is unique but mac address one laptop also contains multiple mac address but it is a physical address but it is a physical address okay so coming to mac address bit size 
MAC address bit size. So MAC address bit size is 48 bit. Interior question, what is the bit size of MAC address? 48 bit. And example of MAC address, how we can represent MAC address? It's a combination with characters and numbers. Combination of characters and numbers. So that is MAC address representation. Example 00, 10, AB, CD, EF, 11. So this is the way how normally we will represent MAC address. Okay, 00, 10, AB, CD, EF, 11. So combination of both characters and strings, so numbers. So that is nothing but MAC address. It is a 48 bit number. So how we can test this MAC address of your laptop or mobile? If you want to check MAC address of your mobile, we have to go to settings tab and we have to click, we have to click on mobile about information. So once again, so we have to go to settings tab. Under the settings tab, about info. About info means about information. If you are clicking on that particular about information, then you will come to know what is the brand name of your mobile and what is the model number of your mobile, what is the IP address of your mobile, and what is the MAC address of the mobile, and what is the firmware or voice version of the mobile, everything you can see. In this similar way, if you want to check MAC address of your laptop, MAC address of your laptop, so how we can check that one? So we have to use one of the command line interface. There are two types of interfaces we have. One is called command line interface, that is CMI. Second one is called GUI or GUI, graphical user interface. So I will put under the definitions or abbreviation side. So one is a GUI. GUI means graphical user interface. Second one is command line interface, CMI, command line interface. So which one is better always graphical user interface or GUI is always better. Why? Because there is no need to remember the commands. Example, consider you are opening the youtube.com or facebook.com or gmail.com. Are you remembering any comments except your username and password? No, right? So, but command line interface, example, Unix operating systems. So that may be Red Hat Linux or CentOS or Ubuntu Debian or middleware operating systems or SunOS operating system or BST operating systems. All these are completely, we have to remember a lot of commands. Command line interface meaning here backend, how we have to log into the respective server or databases or tools. Okay, so that is called command line interface. Command, command means we have to enter the commands to execute something or to configure something or to generate something. So that is command line interface. So now I will open one of the command line interface that is called CMD, command prompt. Command prompt in the Windows machine. So I'm going back to IP address classification part. So I will go to CMD, command prompt. So this command prompt is a graphical user interface, but this is called Sorry, this is called graphical user interface, what I'm sharing, but this is called command line interface. Command line interface meaning here, we have to enter the command, something if you want to get it, or something you want to execute, something you want to perform, something you want to generate, something you want to configure. So we have to remember the commands. But graphical user interface user-friendly. User-friendly means here and there we can move the cursors or we can click on the tabs. So finally we can get the output, whatever if you want to access. So that is called GUI or graphical user interface. Graphical user interface always is user friendly. User friendly meaning here, it's not a complex to operate. It's not complex to operate. That is called user friendly. All of our SIM tools or any other tools you were considering. So it's a user friendly. So now coming back to how to verify the MAC address of the laptop, we have to give the get and uh, I will give space MAC. Let's see whether it will work or not. It's one of the command. So now you can see it's a wrong command. So get space Mac I given, it's a wrong command, but get without space I will give now, let's see. So now without space I given, get means getting the information, Mac means Mac address of the device. So get means getting of the information, Mac means, okay, Mac address of the device. So nothing but right now, I'm using my laptop 
my laptop mac address so using get command syntax is get command get mac get mac is syntax so now you can see here two interfaces are there one is the media disconnected that is one of my proxy server i am using in my laptop second one is whatever wifi i connected so that is my wifi related ethernet interface so these are the two interfaces are there so this is one of the mac address and this is another mac address physical address you can see physical address that physical address is nothing but mac address so you can see it's a six so six strings combination with characters and numbers 14857f180016 so it's a combination of both characters and numbers so second one is 00ff1e8c ecab so this is another mac address so this is the way how we have to get the mac address okay so now i will go back to our sheet and i will write the command so how to get mac address of the device so we have to use command prompt then we have to enter get mac without space so case sensitive it's not a case sensitive case sensitive meaning here even we can write capital letters or small letters anything is fine it will work case sensitive meaning here example passwords if i are using case sensitive it will not work out if i are using passwords case sensitive so instead of capital letter if i are providing small letter it will not work out but here even if i are providing get mac with capital letter it will work out okay it is not a case sensitive that is the meaning so what is the command we have to use get mac so this one i'll put in the highlighting of the borders so that is the way how we have to get the mac address of the respect to laptop okay so second one is ip address so mac address is over second one is ip address so ip address also i defined it's a numerical number or label assigned to each and every machine so every machine meaning here that may be computer that may be laptop that may workstation that may be router or that may be switch that may be load balancer and so on okay numerical number or label assigned to each and every machine in the computer network okay numerical number or label assigned to each and every machine in the network so that is called ip address example of ip address so 10.10.10.1 so this is one of the ip address so who nor normally who will provide these ip address so what are the different types of versions of the ip addresses we have okay so there are two types of ip addresses we have types of ip addresses not types basically versions of the ip addresses types are different versions of the ip address versions of the ip address there are two versions one is ip v4 second one is ip v6 so ip v4 is 32 bit enter a question ip v6 128 bit so ip v4 is 38 bit and ip v6 128 bit so these two are enter a questions once again who will provide these ip addresses so which organization normally it will assign these ip addresses example if i am starting up one of the company so how i have to purchase these ip addresses in that scenario we have to go and we have to contact iana iana so internet assigned number authority so from where we have to connect these ip addresses 
we have to purchase or we have to buy from ia and a internet assigned number authority or internet assignee number authority so from that particular organization we have to purchase ip addresses so we have to purchase always private ip addresses private ip addresses okay so a 32 bit 32 bit meaning here before going to 32 bit first of all what is binary binary means two so what is decimal so decimal is nothing but 10 what is octa so it is nothing but 8 so what is exa so it is nothing but 16 okay so now you can consider 32 bit always always so here bit size we will use 2 power 8 2 power 8 okay always ip address classifications so they are considering 2 power 8 so obviously so 2 power 8 is nothing but so i am writing power 8 so 2 power 8 equal to 256 256 it will start with zero always and it will end with 255 255 so 32 bit if you are dividing 32 bit if you are dividing so it will be four octas 32 by 8 octa means 8 octa means 8 so 32 by octa means 8 so now four octas one ipv4 equal to contains four octas Okay, so IPv4 belongs to 32 bit. So that is equivalent to 32 bit equivalent to 4 octas. Nothing but 32 by 8 equal to 4. So that's why this number is coming. Okay, so 10 dot one octa, 10 dot another octa. 10 dot another octa one another octa so that's why always it is coming as a four four octas okay now coming back so here ipv6 is 128 bit so what is the organization or which organization we have to purchase this particular ip addresses especially private ip addresses private ip address where we have to purchase Example, you are constructing a one building or one business shop or maybe one of the organization or one of the startup company and so on. In that scenario, we have to purchase this particular building, sorry, IP addresses, private IP address ranges from IANA. So IANA full form is internet assigned number authority. So that is the IANA. So from IANA, we have to purchase these private IP address ranges. Okay, now, so everyone is moving from IPv4 to IPv6. What is the reason behind this one? Everyone is moving from IPv4 to IPv6. So the reason behind this one is, so IPv4 has 8 billion addresses, especially private IP address ranges. So the reason behind this one is, one is, lack of ipv4 addresses second one is security reasons so security reasons and lack of ipv4 addresses what is mean by lack of ip addresses whatever private ip addresses ranges are there everything is over so now everyone we are using now completely ipv6 addresses only already in cloud and in north america south america everywhere they are in ipv6 okay even in India also, cloud environments, we are using IPv6. Okay, so here, why we are migrating? From IPv4 to IPv6. So there are two reasons for this one. First reason is lack of ipv4 addresses
second reason is security reasons security reasons because of that reason everyone is migrating from ipv4 to ipv6 main reason is first one lack of ipv ipv4 address so example of ipv6 address so v means version ip means internet protocol you know already ip means internet protocol v means version 6 means 6 number ipv4 means so i means internet p means protocol v means version 4 is nothing but number version number 4 so ipv6 example is it's a combination of characters and numbers it's not like similar to like ipv4 ipv4 is completely numbers only but ipv6 is a combination of characters and numbers similar to like a mac address so how we can represent ipv6 address a b c d sir screen is not visible sir screen not visible yes sir uh, is it no. the same case for everyone no no, 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 no sir, sir. No, no, sir. No, no, all are visible it is uh, visible sir roger visible. roger right it's visible sir it's visible uh, sir fine. okay sir okay sir yeah fine thanks yeah so example ipv6 is a b c d 10 c d 1 2 3 4 1011 so this is the way how we can represent ipv6 address so now if are comparing with ipv4 ipv4 example as i said ipv4 for example is 10.10.10.1 so now you can compare with these two which one is easy to remember obviously ipv4 but it's very difficult to remember ipv6 so that is meant by security reasons that is meant by security reasons so lack of ipv4 meaning here so private ip address range is 2 power 32 So two power in thirty two meaning here two into two into two into two into two into two into up to thirty two times. That means if we are calculating two power thirty two, it will come approximate eight billion plus. Those eight billion private IP address ranges is already over. So that is meant by lack of IPv four addresses. Okay, so that is the reason we are migrating from IPv four to IPv six. so now coming to classes of ip addresses classes of ip address so there are five classes of ip addresses we have first one is class a second one is class b third one is class c inter equation this one how many class of ip address we have next one is class d next one is class e so these are all the five types of class of ip address so this class of ip address is once again it is a combination of both private plus public so that means these classes include both combination of private plus public that means whatever range it is defined it contains both private plus public so what is my private plus public i will explain so coming to range so this is type of class next one is range so it will start with and what is the importance of the classes of ip address each and every class importance also we can see so first one it will start with class a address range from 1 to 126 so nothing but not 1 to we can say 0 so 0 Dot zero dot zero dot zero two. It will end with one twenty six dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. So this is class A. So next one is class B. One twenty eight dot zero dot zero dot zero two. One ninety one dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. Next one class C. It will start with one ninety two dot one ninety two dot zero dot zero dot zero two two twenty three dot two fifty five dot 
Next one last class E. So two forty dot zero dot zero dot zero two two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. So this is so many billions of the address. So if are validating and if are migrating or if are converting this IP address zero dot zero dot zero dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot one. 0.0.0.2, in such a way, if are completely okay, so taking all the count, it's a billions plus. It's a billions of the IP addresses. So public and private are included in this range. Yeah, so sir, yes, please. Sir, what is that uh, dot represents? Dot octa, every octa, so eight characters are eight bit. 8 bit, 8 bit equal to 1 octa, right? So here IPv4 is 32 bit. So they have defined scientists who are is identified this IP address. So they defined, so one bit equal to, one byte equal to 8 bit octa otherwise. So one octa equal to 8 bit. So they are mentioning dot to identify easy way. Otherwise, so we cannot identify, example dot is not there. How we can identify the number for whatever number we are assigning to the each and every device? It's very difficult, right? So that's why that 32 bit it is divided into two, four octas. So that's whenever octa is completed, it will come identification purpose one dot. Clear? Uh, so one question: uh, Do we need to remember all this like uh, zero zero dot one two six dot? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, is Compulsor, the inter point of okay? Is, it's entire question this one. Whenever any intervention question will come, I will put in the some other color. Understood? So whenever I'm making the change of this particular color, that means it's an entire question. Clear? Uh, uh, clear, sir. So we have to explain them, right? Uh, so class B is 128.0. Yes, yes, we have to. We have to. So okay. they will ask like what, how many types of class of IP addresses we have and what is the range? Even if they don't ask range also, you can explain that's better. Oh, wonderful. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, what about 127 dot something? Number is moving. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, it's a good question. So next one is loop back address. Loop back address, it is missing. That is 127.0.0.1. So this is called loop back address. You can see the range. 0 to 126. Next one, 128 to 191. 192 to 223. 224 to 239. 242 to 255. Where is 127? 127 after 126, it has to come. So 127, it's a separate classification that is for loop back under something, one of the software if you want to install. Maybe some of the ports it wants to listen in your laptop. Some of the software it has to listen in your laptop. Some of the services it is listen or it has to install in our laptop. In that scenario, we'll use loop back address. Loop back address. Basically, it is a host address. Host address of the computer. Host address of the computer. It itself, it will represent the host. So that is called loop back. So mainly for something, some of the software, if you want to install, we will install that one and we'll use a local host. Local host is nothing but loop back address. So in bracket, I will put local host. Sometimes we'll install some of the software. Example, I want to install Nessus software. Nessus is one of the vulnerability management tool. In that scenario, I'll install one of the scanner in my laptop. And I will use using loop back address. I can open that particular whatever tool I installed. In that scenario, we will use local host. So I will show you this one practically. Even couple of ports, it will listen under the loop back address. Okay, so maybe tomorrow class we have ports and protocol session is there. There I will show you what is loop back address and what are the different types of ports it is listening and what is, what is exactly TCP connection established and so on. Okay, so coming to importance point of view, class A, class B, class D, class C. Sir, I have on.
Yes, please. I have one question, sir. Here we have the IP address of one five classes. Then why we have to divide it five classes? That is the scientist who is identified. So yeah. if I ask questions like uh, why, okay, sun will rise in the east. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fine. It's a universal Fine. truth. It's a universal truth. Yeah, so okay. why water always will go into this slope? It's a whoever is identified the scientist, we have to follow that particular rules and regulations. Clear? Sir. Uh, Hello, sir. Yes, please. Sir, uh, all the five classes belongs to version six? No, there is no IPv6 in this one. Everything is IPv4 only. Okay, sir. Thank you. Clear? All these sir, water the... we are discussing, it's IPv4. Hello. And sir, uh, uh, how can we identify the train? So range, it's a zero to 126. See example, it is starting with zero and it is one second is starting with 126. 128, 191, 192, 223, 224 to 239, 242, 255. So that is the way we can identify easily. Uh, no, understood, sir. Uh, well, I meant to say that through internet, we can find out, right? Or like through laptop or from MAC address, from where do we get all this? Uh... Yes, yes, I will explain that when I will explain. All right, that. yeah, fine, sir. thank you. Yeah, coming to importance of the each and every class, whatever they, in, I mean, scientists they identified or they found, so they divided even importance as well. So why we have to define these classes and what is the each and every range of the IP address? So now, so we can see the, what is the application uses or importance of the class. So first class is used for large number of R enterprise level. Enterprise level meaning here, it's a big organizations, big organizations like MNC companies, multinational companies, or else CMM five level companies. So whoever employs greater than 10,000 employees, those companies will call it as enterprise or large number of hosts or large number of employees of the organization. So this one we will use for enterprise or else large number of hosts or devices. Large number of devices. So that is the class A importance. So we will use this application usage for the enterprise level and also large number of devices are there in the organization level. That is nothing but every employee has a laptop, maybe workstation or maybe desktop or maybe servers and so on, right? So every device has one of the numerical number or label is assigned. So in that scenario, it will use more number of devices. So obviously organization level. Example, consider 10,000 employees are there in the organization level. In the 10,000 employees, they will use maybe one device or two devices. They will bring their own mobile that is called BYOD device or couple of servers will be there, couple of databases will be there couple of security tools will be there, couple of other uh, software related tools will be there and so on. In that scenario, so it's a large number of devices will be there. In that scenario, each and every device we have to assign one number. So that is nothing but, so enterprise level. So example, consider TCS, SBA, HDFC, or Apollo hospitals, retail companies like a Flipkart, all these are very big organizations. Those organizations will call it as a enterprise, or we will also call it a large number of devices it contains. So in that scenario, they will use class A. Second one is medium size network. So example, maybe 100 to maybe 1000 to 10,000. So devices are there in the organization level or maybe 500 employees there in the organization level. In that scenario, we will use this class B. Uh, next one is class C. Class C is for LAN connections, LAN connections. So most of your LAN connections, local area network, whenever you are using a LAN, RJ45 or Ethernet cable, in that scenario, it will come as a 192.168. I will explain that one later. So next one is multitasking. So if devices, if you want to configure for multiple functions, multitasking is nothing but more than one task or more than one action. Example, servers. So servers will do more than one action because it has to respond back to so many end users. So otherwise other multiple sessions, it will coordinate in between the one user to another user. 
So multitasking is more than one task or more than one action, whatever we are using in that scenario, this class T we will use it. So next one is R and D. So it's completely for research and development purpose. Scientists, they will use this class E. So research and development and testing and labs. So those scenarios will use R and D, sir, class E. So this is the usage of the IPv4 and also application importance why we are using, okay, so class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E. So they divide, they divide into these five types of ranges along with importance or application usage or usage of the respect to range of the IP addresses. So coming back. Now, look back at this already we discussed. Normally, whenever if you want to install service or something, if you want to listen in your laptop, or maybe you want to configure one of the software, and assigning that particular local host to loopback address. In that scenario, we have to use loopback address. That loopback address, we have to take the browser level and we have to log into the respect to local host and then we have to enter the username and password. I will show you practical this one later. So now coming to how to identify the IP address of the device. How to identify the IP address of the device. Example, if it is a mobile, as I said previously, so you have to open to the settings tab, then you have to go to the mobile about information. If you are clicking on that one, then you will come to know that what is the IP address of the mobile it is using, and also what is the MAC address, what is the firmware version, model number, and so on. In this similar way, if you want to check the IP address of the laptop, how we can identify. So we have to use command, one second command line interface. So that command line interface is nothing but so what is the syntax we have to use? First of all, I will go and I will open the command prompt. See here, you can write IP address. So it is not showing. So IP config you can write. So now you can see, so whenever you are checking IP config, it not only will display the IP address of the device, even it will display the MAC address of the device as well. Okay, so now you can see, so for my laptop, so IPv4 address 192.168.0.200. So that is my laptop IP address. And next one is, so IPv6 address is FD01, so 89BB, A463, E161. So this is the IPv6 address. And also you can see, yeah, Mac, Next one is default gateway. Default gateway, you can see 192.168.0.1. What is meant by default gateway, first of all? Default gateway, it's one of the internet question as well. Default gateway meaning here, whenever you are connected to the Wi-Fi or LAN, first you are routing. So example, you are want to go maybe Bangalore to Hyderabad or Bangalore to Chennai. So in that scenario, so Bangalore next stop. So what it will come? So maybe Hyderabad to Bangalore. Hi after Hyderabad, what is the next stop it will come? So default gateway means here next routing IP address. It will act as a router. First our request in my laptop in this scenario, 192.168.0.200. So from this IP, next communication will go to 192.168.0.1. From 192.168.0.1, it will go another IP address, it will go another IP address and finally it will go outside. So this is the way how it will work. So default gateway meaning, so neighbor IP address are, so from existing IP address, whatever neighbor IP address is there, from there it will act as a gate or a bridge. Then from there it will route to the outside. So that is called default gateway. Okay, so one more command is there that is called IP config. All these comments are interior questions. All. So IP config spelling wrong. IP config slash all. Now you can see if I'm entering IP config all, it contains everything. So not only just IP address information, it is providing the host name, it is providing the MAC address, it is providing the what all the internet in Ethernet interfaces are configured and so on. So this is the command I given here. IP config gone. So from this one, I'm getting all this information. Okay. So host name of the, my laptop, this one. So, and the mode is hybrid mode. So next one is routing enabled. No, routing did not enable. 
and wireless LAN adapter. So right now I connected Wi-Fi. So that Wi-Fi physical address of the Ethernet interface is this one, nothing but MAC address. So in my laptop, one more okay proxy server I configured. So that physical address of the proxy server is this one. So Jetscale is a proxy. Jetscale is a proxy. So this is the physical address of the respect to Ethernet interface, whatever I configured for proxy. So next one is wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi. So one second. So this is the entire information. So my IP address is this one. Preferred will be there, right? So IPv4 address, my laptop IP address is this one. So, and also every IP address, every device has a default gateway that I already said, 192.168.01. And DNS server. So example something, if I want to configure or if I want to access any of the domain, so any of the domain, example, google.com, if I want to access, in that scenario, it will go through the DNS server. And next one, you can see, lowback address also, they configured under DNS server only. 127.0001, so nothing but, so one of the service is enabled as DNS per in my laptop. So this is the way how we can identify. So net bias information, network, okay, bias input output system. It's one of the laptop configuration, booting purpose we will use, it's enabled. So this is the way how we can identify the IP address of the device. So command is IP config. So syntax I'm writing, syntax for how to identify IP address of the laptop or system. So I'll put generic way, system. So in that scenario, so what is the syntax we have to write? CMD, command prompt. So I'll put IP config, or else one more command, CMD, IP config, space, all. So these are all the two commands we have to use to identify the IP address of the device. Okay, IP config or IP config space slash all. So in such a way, we can identify the respective system of the IP address. Okay, so that is the way how we can identify and MAC address command is get MAC. So these comments, once again, we will discuss under the network commands. Some of the attack is got compromised in that scenario. If you want to check the, identify the host name and IP address and MAC address of the device, we have to run all these commands. So these comments you have to remember. These comments you have to remember. So next one is private IP address ranges. Now we have seen the combination of public plus private. Now we can see dedicated to private IP. So these private IP address only will purchased by respect to organizations from the IANA. So private IP address ranges. It's very, 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 very important in your question. So we are not a network engineer to configure IP address in the switch or router or maybe in the firewall or maybe in the DNS server or maybe DHCP server, this is not our role. Our role is, so whenever any attack is getting compromised or whenever any at attack, is, attack is alerting, in that scenario, first of all, you have to identify whether it is an insider attack or external attack. So you have to classify the attack, whether internal employee is doing the attack by unintentionally or unknowingly, or maybe external attack itself is trying to do the attack. So that is what we have to identify. Okay, so we are not doing any routing and switching in the router level, switch level. Our main job is completely security. So security people normally what they will do, so they will identify the attacks. So something got data breach happened in that scenario, that particular data breach, it is happened within the employee has done or outside attackers or intruders or hackers, they have completely hacked that particular system. So that's what they have to do the, uh, first they have to identify and later on, they have to do the instant investigation or forensic investigation. So private IP address ranges. So there are three types of private IP address ranges. So 10.0.0.0. So it will end with 10.255.255.255. Okay. It's a part of class A, you know, already because 10 will come under, 10 will come under class A because zero to 126. So 10 is in between 0 to 126. 
So class A is starting with zero and end is ending with one twenty six. Obviously, so ten also in between. It's a part of class A. Second one is one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero two one seventy two dot thirty one dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. So you can see now class B one twenty eight dot one twenty eight to one ninety one. So obviously one seventy two in between one twenty eight to one ninety one. So it's obviously it's a class B. So next one is so one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot zero two one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. So you can see one ninety two dot zero. So class C it is starting one ninety two dot zero. Obviously one ninety two dot zero after only one ninety two dot one sixty eight will come. So it's a part of class C. So these are the three private IP address ranges. Especially you can okay uh, you can uh, observe one of the okay so configuration or IP address range seven uh, second one class B one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero and it is ending with one seventy two dot thirty one not two fifty five. Okay otherwise it is not one seventy two dot sixteen dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. So that is one of the observation you can do. So one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero two one seventy two dot thirty one only, not two fifty five, not sixteen. It's a thirty one. So that is the small observation you can identify. So these are all the three private IP addresses range every our nations will use. Whatever company you are going to join, that may be Tech Mahindra, that may be Pro or Infosys. Our SBI, our Apollo Hospitals, our Flipkart, our Amazon, our Cisco, our AT&T, whatever company you are going to join, so your IP address range always either 10 series or 172.16 series or 192.168 series only. Okay, so that you can observe after joining in a company. So coming back, all are already working professional. You can observe this particular whatever. Okay, so configuration we are using their laptop level. So, other than these the three ranges of the IP address, everything is a public. So, one dot one dot one dot one. So, whether it's a public or private, it's a public because it is not included within the range. Two dot two dot two dot two. It's a public. So, nine dot zero dot zero dot zero. It's a public. So other than the three within these three IP address ranges, everything is a public. So whenever any security incident or security alert or security attack is coming into the organization level, so according to this IP address range only, you you can classify incident is a internal attack or insider threat. So insider threat, how we can identify? How we can identify? Whether security attack or incident is internal attack or external attack. By knowing the ranges of IP address. Excellent. That is the perfect answer. By knowing the IP address of the range, and also you have to mention the answer. Also, that is nothing but ten series, one seventy two dot sixteen series. One ninety two dot one sixty eight series. Okay, by knowing the IP address range, that's perfect answer. By knowing the IP address range, that is nothing but that is so ten dot zero series, comma one seventy two dot sixteen series, comma one ninety two dot one sixty eight series. So if our classify whenever any attack is coming. So, if this attack is coming within this IP, then we can conclude that whether it is a internal attack or external attack. So, this is the way how we can identify internal attack. Also called it as insider threat. So, internal attack. Another name is internal attack. Another name is insider threat. Nothing but so knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally. Example HR person, maybe HR obviously they will contact the 
talent acquisition people and they will call and they will check the respective so skills are matching or not whatever resources or recruitment it is required to the organization level and finally they will shortlist and they will make the offer letters they selected or not all those things they will do so that is their job basically so example one of the hr so she is sending a, she or he hr is sending an offer letter to so and so person unfortunately she is not aware of what is malware what is virus what is trojan what is ransomware and so on just as she will attach the offer letter and she will put the whoever is selected that candidate guy and finally he, she will send the offer letter so that file or offer letter whatever she is sending the hr maybe it has a malware in that scenario it's nothing but unknowingly she has sent it she did not do intentionally malware is infected that file and she wants to transfer to outside okay so she she is doing her job so nothing but releasing the offers to the so and so candidates in the similar way application development team couple of people they will download the software and they will modify the software and they will customize the software and they will use that particular software in their application development or product development most of the people will do this one only so example one of the application developer he downloaded some of the software file related to coding part that coding water file he downloaded maybe that file has a virus so he did not do want sorry he did not want wantedly he did not do respect to downloading of the virus so his role is so developing of the software or developing of the application or developing of the product his role is doing his job activities he is doing so for that reason he downloaded the file that file real uh, that file unfortunately it contains the virus so he did not do wantedly that particular activity so he did only for his job roles and responsibilities that is also we'll call it as unknowingly or unintentionally some of the people wantedly they will make these attacks like a social engineering attacks sharing the passwords so internal attack another name is called insider threat now sir, i will ask sir, single doubt sir yes please sir if it is fire private ip address then it is said to be an internal attack sir yes How correct to... yeah okay other than this range if any ip address is there then it is said to be an external attack yes that's correct that's a public or attacker it, or external that's correct yeah it may be class a class b class b no issue na no, sir yes yes no issues okay thank you sir now i will ask couple of people okay i will pinpoint the name so those particular people only can answer the okay so whether it is internal attack or external attack because whenever any attack is coming you have to identify what type of incident and whether it is internal attack or external attack and understood so now i am asking and i'll pinpoint couple of people abdul gafur so one of the brute force attack is coming one of the brute force attack is coming from coming from so ip address is 192.169.0.0 so whether it is internal attack or external attack it is uh, 168 so i am repeating brute it's force attack is coming from ip address 192.168.0.0 so this brute force attack is doing by internal user or external attacker external attacker sir because it will be internal means 192.168.0.02 it will be 192.168.255.255 sir are you sure yes sir it is 169 so obviously it will be external it's perfect that's correct so just i want to confuse you but you said right okay so next one thank you so much abdul so next question to manasa so manasa this is question for you one of okay. the malware <laughs> i think three manasas are there i am not sure any manasa can answer one okay. of the malware attack is coming from 
172.15.0.0. This is external or internal? External only, sir. Why? Uh, this is not internal IP. Is private IP, right? Yes, that's correct. IP. Yes, that's correct. External attack only. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome, sir. So next one, one more, last one. So one of the dictionary attack is coming from. All these are different types of attacks. We can discuss under the network attacks and cyber attacks. So one of the dictionary attack is coming from 10.0.0.255. So this question goes to Gangadhar Varma. Ganga, Gangadhar Varma. Are you there? I think he's in mute. So maybe I will ask. Channa, channa, Hello? Yeah, yeah, yes, Gangadhar. I think, sir, it is an internal attack. Internal attack. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Okay. That's perfect. Now you, you know how to classify the attack. Whether insider threat or external attack is trying to do the attack. So whenever any attack is coming in the SIM tool, first thing is we have to identify whether this particular attack is insider threat or external attack. So if it is the insider threat or internal attack, we'll go and we'll contact the end user. If we have the permission to contact the end user. So if it is external attack in that scenario, we have to check the reputation of the IP address and we have to block that particular IP address in the firewall level. So this. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Hello. This IP address and all it will uh, uh, shown in the to SIM tool, right? Yes, it will show. Yes. Whenever any alert will be generated part of security incident, it will show in the SIM tool. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you, sir. You're welcome. So these are a couple of examples to identify how we can say it's an internal attack or external attack. Clear? So that is about classes of IP address and IP packet. So what is meant by IP packet? So IP packet contains, okay, IP header and payload. IP means it's a internet protocol. Whatever messages you are sending in the Microsoft Teams, or maybe Slack channel, or maybe Skype for business, or WhatsApp, or Facebook, Facebook, or maybe in the email, you are sending an email, or you are accessing one of the application, and so on. Everything, so data format in the form of IP packets. So IP packet format is, so it contains IP header and payload. IP header and payload. So this is IP header. And second one is payload. So IP header once again. So in short, this one basically. In short, IP packet, how we can represent. So IP header and payload. But if you want to see the actual IP packet, it contains a lot of information. It has the IP flags. It has sequence number. It has a version of the IP address. It has the data. It has a padding. It is a 32-bit number and so on. That we can see later. But right now, what is IP packet? It is internet protocol packet. So which layer this IP packets will come as per OSI? Network layer. Network layer. Yeah, that's correct. So it's a network layer. Data format is IP packets. So this IP packets only we will use routing purpose and sending the message from one source to another source. Okay. So IP header once again contains Source IP and destination IP. Source IP meaning here, example, you are sending an email to me, you are the source, and what your IP address contains to your laptop or your mobile. So that is called source IP. And destination IP, where the email has to reach. In this scenario, it's me. So whatever IP I'm using for my laptop or mobile, so that is nothing but destination IP. So IP header contains 
specifically in short so source ip and destination ip and payload is nothing but piece of written code piece of written code that is that is also we can say message body of the content piece of written code piece of written code or message so this one called payload so whenever any attack is coming you have to analyze the that code also nothing but logs we have to analyze okay so that is nothing but ip packets so in practically ip packet if you want to see i will show you now itself because anyway topic has come and separate discussion also there related to ip packet so it is very bigger one and you can see here so ip packet contains so version nothing but type of the version you are using whether it is ipv4 ipv6 and internet header length so 0 to 32 bit so it is starting with 0 actual ipv4 bit number is 32 you know already so it is starting with 0 so that's why it is 31 so 0 to 31 is number 32 bit so 0 to 4 is a version nothing but type of version next one internet header length length of the respect to ip address time of service next one total length of the ip header identification of the ip header ip flags fragment offset time to live protocol ip protocol obviously header checksum source address destination address data this data is nothing but payload so this entire up to here from version to till options if are combining together this one we can call it as ip header so version to till options so if are making a shortcut then with this one we will call it as ip header in short we will say source ip and destination ip and second is a second is payload that is nothing but data so this one we can discuss later tcp packet also we can see later so that is about ip packet yeah so according to this one we can classify the what is the ip address and sometimes whenever any attacks are coming we will check the reputation checks example one of the attack is coming from 1.1.1.1 so that is the attacker ip address attacker ip address in that scenario so whenever that instant is coming we have to go and we have to check the reputation of the ip address reputation meaning here whether it is a malicious one or whether it is a good one so good means here it will not do any harmful thing but malicious meaning it's a dangerous one that is attacker ip address how to check the reputations of ip address so we have couple of tools are there as per training uh, training class so not training class training topics you can see here couple of tools i provided checking the reputation checking the domains checking the hash values and files mx tool okay next one is ip wide ip abyss database so why we we'll use all these tools okay to check the reputation of the ip whenever any attack is trying to do the attack obviously that alert has a ip address someone is asking right whether alert has the ip address or not yes it has the ip address so we have to take that particular ip address then we have to go to mx tool ip wide ip abyss database virustotal.com and so on so example one of the phishing email is coming from 1.1.1.1 so in that scenario we have to go to mx tool or we have to go to virustotal.com so these are all regularly we will use these tools reputation checks to check whether it's a genuine activity or whether it is a illegitimate activity from the attacker so spelling wrong yeah so example this one now one of the attack is coming from as i said 1.1.1.1 so there may be phishing email attack that may be brute force attack that may be dos attack or flooding attack and so on 
in that scenario file file means we have to upload the files it's not applicable because ip address is different url meaning so whatever website you are accessing example virustotal.com this url so search you can see here now url we can search ip addresses we can search domain names we can search file hash values also we can check so that means whatever 1.1.1.1 we are trying to validate option is available here under this search so now you can type that 1.1.1.1 what are phishing email it has come to the end or i mean organization level just you can enter now this tool will give so out of 64 you can see total 5 by 64 in this one are able to see 5 by 64 sorry 5 by 94 sorry 5 by 94 so this 5 by 94 out of 94 vendors so five vendors so who are all the vendors here so example here blue iv cms threat intelligence komodo crdf okay sci radar ebu6 acronis all these so these five vendors they are saying that it's a malicious activity so 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1, we should not believe and we should not trust so now we have to consider this one is a malicious ip address and we have to block this ip address in our firewall so that so whenever attacker is next time he is doing the attack from 1.1.1.1 he is not able to do why because already we blocked that particular ip address in the firewall level normally ip address will block in the firewall level so this is called ip reputation checks checking of the uh, reputation of the ip checking of the reputation of the ip meaning whenever any incident is coming to the organization level in that scenario as a security incident investigation person or as a forensic incident investigation analyst you have to take the ip address and you have to use the couple of tools and finally you have to identify whether it is a legitimate or illegitimate legitimate means nothing but genuine activity illegitimate is nothing but some of the harmful attack is trying to do the attack now after verifying this particular reputation check then we have to go and we have to block that particular ip address in the firewall level so that is called ip reputation checks okay so remember from this concept what did you understand how to check the IP reputation, how to check the IP reputation whenever any attack is coming. Not only that one, whenever any attack is generating in the same tool, in that situation, so how can we identify whether it is internal or insider threat or external attack or attacker is trying to do the attack. So that is the overall summary for today agenda. So unless otherwise, you should not remember how to go and assign the IP address in the, okay, so net, uh, I mean, DHCP level. So otherwise, how to configure IP address to one of the system, that is not your job. That one will be taken by care by network engineer, routing and switching guys or network admin guys. Our role is completely, so whatever alerts we received, so classifying that particular alert notification and according to that one, we have to take the appropriate mitigation steps or infection cleaning, that is our role, okay. So coming back in the overall today class, so what is the important things you have to remember? Class of IP address, okay. So second thing is you have to remember IPv4 bit size. What is IP address? Next one is uh, how many classes we have and what is the range of the class of IP address? Finally, private IP address ranges. That is very, very, very important. Private IP address ranges is very important. So this is very important thing for today class. So even classes also, these two very important. So remember this one as well. So because our main role is to do the investigation. So these things we have to remember. So, and you have to classify. Additionally, I'm putting this one also color change anyway given already here. Okay. So that is, that those are all things. What is IP address? What is MAC address? And what is the classification of IP address? So what is the importance of IP address? What is public IP and what is private IP? Okay, and so on. Okay, so that's all about today class case. We'll continue tomorrow. So tomorrow class, I will take, give me one second. I will check my calendar. 
సార్ ఆర్కే సార్ yes please hello yes sir, please carry on video and uh, today's video not received sir till now no already uploaded do you have access to google drive yeah i have access to google drive but not received any for me is it so so let me check let me check and i will upload uh, today itself i am giving promise to you so today itself yeah, okay. i will upload I will, share, i will share my email id yes that's fine in this group okay yeah so yeah to, tomorrow also tomorrow we have class is there at 7:30 itself okay i'm committing now itself so tomorrow once again 7:30 class so that's Hi, all for today class guys so do you have any queries i have a small queries yes aruna so ip packet is nothing but packet capture only right no 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 that is different so ip packet capture meaning here whenever any attack is coming in that scenario we have to we have to capture the packet from firewall so normally packet capture we can do in the load balancer or else we can do in the firewall level so once we are doing the packet capture that packet capture we have to take and we have to identify so where is the issue first of all whether issue is there in the network level or issue is there in the application level or issue is there in the server level or my packet is a retransmission or packet is dropping in between source and destination and so on so packet capture meaning here whatever traffic is going on in the form of ip packets so that is nothing but packet capture whenever any alert is coming and it is compromised you are not sure where is the exactly issue so whether it is issue is there in the application layer or whether issue is there in the transport or internet layer or issue is there in the network layer or in the network interface layer or server level in that scenario so we have to do the packet capture and we have to troubleshoot troubleshoot is nothing fixing the problem so analyzing the problem so that packet capture we have to export from firewall and we have to go to the network traffic analyzer that is called wireshark there we have to import and respect to what or just now i have said analysis we have to do so that is nothing but packet capture okay got it sir that moreover that packet capture it will be encrypted right so we need to decrypt that one is there any tool where we can do sir that one to understand the how to analyze so ip packet if it is encrypted we have next generation firewalls so next generation firewall do stateful inspection and deep packet inspection so deep packet inspection meaning here whatever that particular ip packet it is going as inbound traffic and outbound traffic it will open the packet and it will see any malicious content of the file is there or not so ip encryption even though if you are doing so in that scenario as per deep packet function functionality ssl uploading will happen in the load balancer side so after load balancing side so obviously our firewall will be there so everything is a clear text so there is no need to do the packet catch packet capture decryption using separate tool okay sir thank you you are welcome okay sir one question so yeah. what is the purpose to tap the packet is just to find out the hacker what is the could you please repeat once again uh, what is the purpose to have the packet uh, to find out the hacker or attack purpose to have the packet purpose is basically so mac address is not very important as compared to ip address so okay. first of all we have to check the geo location one thing from which country those attacks are coming second thing is ip address so mac address only we have to check whenever mac flooding types of attacks are coming in that scenario what is the misleading of the mac address he is sending so attacker will mislead and he will uh, send the mac request to the switch switch confuse whether this request is coming from the genuine user or maybe attacker in that scenario only normally we will go and we will see mac address whether it is internal user mac address or external user mac address or attacker otherwise uh, so only so, right sir so through sim tool we identify them right yes we can thank you sir you are welcome any sir, other sir if the attacker is uh, on attacking in middle so with, uh, with the ip address if we detected with ip address we need to send to the to, to block that ip address or we will block so in case if you using man in the middle attack 
and if you are not using encryption mechanism normally 90% of the cases will use uh, ssl tls certificates ssl tls certificates contains encryption mechanism and also it will provide authenticity authenticity is nothing but identity of the person whoever is trying to send the messages or receiving the messages or sending a email or accessing the application and so on so 99% of the cases we have to use a data at a transit level so data at a transit level meaning here in the transfer level of the messages we have to always use ssl tls certificates even if you want to try to access the rdp access also we have to use ssl tls certificates if you want to access vpn we have to use ssl tls certificates if you want to access the application we have to use ssl tls certificates very very less chances are there to completely okay break that particular connectivity of the encryption but in case so attacker he is coming in between user and application or user and server and he is taking the session in that scenario obviously in case he is not able to spoof the ip address of the original attacker or impersonating the original end user ip address yes we are able to identify so whether it is attacker ip address or internal user ip address we have couple of uh, deep packet inspection mechanisms are there in the firewall level it will open that particular tor ip tor is nothing but the onion router so that is nothing but its attacker ip address attacker he will mask his original ip address and uh, on behalf of the original user he will send it in that scenario firewall has a capability to do so whether it is internal ip address or external attacker ip address yes finally what is the summary of the, this discussion yes we can see attacker ip address as well even though it is a man in the middle attack have a right to block that uh, ip yes okay sir it means tor ip is always is it malicious tor ip always it is not a malicious so something it is uh, okay so layer tor is nothing but the onion router so onion has a different layers correct so in this one so attacker he will mask his original ip address but even though that is coming into the our organization level as i said it will completely open the packet so tor ip not always okay so attacker ip address even we use for business once the tor ip you identify then we have to go and you have to check the reputations okay sir got it so aruna we should not say i oh, i i i got it we have to say i get it okay, hello sir thank you hello yes, sir Ra yes raj yes uh, raj please uh, please depend default gateway and dns server yeah dns server separate topic is there whenever one of the website or domain if you want to access in that scenario the domain name will be mapped to back end ip address it will resolve that particular domain name to ip address and are able to access the respective website or application whatever you are trying to access that is called dns so this dns server will maintain all the domains so that may be whatever business purpose we are using the domains so block listed domains white listed domains and so on so that is dns server so separate topic is there there i'll explain about the dns so coming to default gateway default gateway meaning here so it's like a router it will route the basically traffic example you are trying to access one of the internal application or external application your first request will go to access switch from access switch will go to default gateway even access switch also sometimes we can consider as a default gateway so nothing but from your ip address of the laptop next request wherever it is going root basically root next hop 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 means next neighbor neighbor related ip address of the device that is nothing but default gateway clear um, <clears throat> sir i have a question here like uh, if i'm using uh, my personal laptop and it is connected to internet so who assign uh, the default gateway to my laptop so in that scenario whatever okay so is it uh, without vpn or with vpn without vpn just a, a normal internet i am using okay so in this scenario example i i hope you are in bangalore so in this scenario so maybe act fibernet is available so maybe other different types of vendors are available right 
So in that scenario, whatever ACT fiber net gateway is available, so that gateway router they will available. So in this scenario, example ACT is the default gateway router. So okay. automatically it will take the connection. Automatically it will take the connection. You no need to go and assign. So whenever you are configuring, nothing but in this scenario, as I said, ACT fiber net. So are you using ACT or something else, Santu? Yeah, um, it's ACT only. Act only. Okay, done. So in that scenario, so basically, uh, so from your example, your IP address is laptop 192.168.1.0. Your default gateway is 192.168.1.1. So, so that 192.168.1.1, obviously, it is from Act Fiber Net. So at the time of the, okay, so internet installation, we have to do a couple of configurations. So we have to open the respective console, they will take care of the port and as well as IP address allocation, default gateway, everything. So that time they will assign the IP address. So it is not our job to assign the IP address. That is from the respect to internet service provider, ISP router. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other? Okay, guys, thank you so very much. So we'll continue tomorrow, 7.30. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, please go through these topics, guys. Yeah. So coming Sunday, I will take the interviews. Okay. Thanks.